we were going to the same church for like three, four years and we would never say hi to each other. The Holy Spirit fell upon us and we just started crying and crying and crying. We, we were crying so much that we fell down to the floor. We were on our knees. God, if you really are gonna speak to me, reveal to me if he's the one by giving me these two signs. Hi guys, <laughs> welcome to my channel. Today, I'm all smiles with a very, very special guest who is my boyfriend. So if you're new to my channel, I made a video a few years ago that got a lot of views, which is about how I was 21 and never been in a relationship. And this is my first relationship at 23. I'm currently 24, but we started dating when we were 23. And it was a very, very long process for us to start dating. We spent two years waiting after meeting each other, after you know catching feelings and everything. And God really processed both of us throughout that period. So we wanted to just share how we met, our love story, in the hopes of inspiring other people who maybe you're struggling through singleness, maybe you never had a boyfriend, maybe you never had a girlfriend, whatever. We wanna show you that it is worth the wait to wait on God um, because truly he was the one that made this happen. And you'll see why. So the first question that a lot of people ask us or would ask is where do we meet and how do we meet? And I guess when we met. So I'll let Ernesto answer that. So me and Catherine met two years ago at the current church that we go right now. The thing is that she had already been attending church for about two to three years and I never actually got to know her. I never said hi to her. And then one day while I was at church, one of our youth leaders at the time, she came up to me and she was like, hey Ernesto, I wanna talk to you. We wanna do something different with the youth and we want you to be one of the, one of the leaders. She told me that I'm gonna have a partner and I had no idea who it was, but she told me one of the girls that goes to this church is gonna help you out with the ministry. And in my head, since I didn't really know Catherine that much, and I, I just didn't know her, the thought of her helping me out in the ministry came to mind, but I wasn't exactly sure because in my mind, I just didn't know her. She, she didn't really participate much, but that was just me. That was from my perspective. And then eventually, I found out that it was her. When I first came to church, I'm not gonna lie, I had a feeling the person I was gonna be with was probably gonna be at that church. I don't know why, I just I just had a feeling. It just logically, it made sense. And when I got there, I looked around and the cutest guy to me there was him. Now, did that mean I was gonna come talk to him? No, but there was an instance that we shared <laughs> that first day I went to church where I asked like where the drinks were <laughs> and I happened to ask Pretty Boy Ernesto. And <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I asked him and when I asked him, his energy was just like, not a good like he was he is very shy but it can come off sometimes as like oh i just don't want to talk to you yeah. at all anybody yeah. so he was like oh they're right there and literally the drinks were right there but i just didn't know i hadn't seen them and i was new and i was like oh it's a young guy he's kind of cute not that i was saying asking him because i thought he was cute but it was more so like oh i don't know anybody here let me try to start a conversation and get help to actually know where the drinks are his response was very like it's over there like he did not care i thought he was gonna be mad nice whatever he wasn't so ever since that instance which he didn't know until way later anytime i would see him in church i would not like talk to him like i wouldn't say hi or anything not because there was bad energy <laughs> but because like since he reacted that way to me that first time i never like thought of ever talking to him again so like he said, we were going to the same church for like three, four years and we would never say hi to each other. Him, I don't know why he never said hi to me, but that's why I never said hi to him. I think I think one of the reasons was because I was dating. Like at that time, years ago, I did Good have job. a girlfriend. And <laughs> I just did it. Like when it came to, sometimes if it wasn't somebody that I knew or somebody that I could trust or that was a friend, especially if it was another female, I, I'm the type of guy that I'm always very careful with that. So I think that was one of the reasons mm -hmm. as well as to why I didn't really approach her like that because I wouldn't want her to take it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. It would have just been weird. Besides that instance and everything, like we just never really had a reason to say hi or to interact until we were approached. Well, I was approached individually as well, tell, being told, hey, we're considering you for youth leader and we want to pick a guy, but we're still praying to see who that guy will be. I did not think it was going to be Ernesto because I didn't know him. I had never spoken to him in my entire life. And also, I thought he was pretty young at the time, like he was 18, I was 21, yes, he's four years younger, get over it. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. and, and honestly, oh, I, I wouldn't have expected myself to date someone who's four years younger, but he is not immature. But basically, I didn't think it would be him because like of his age, even though 
he's very mature. I didn't know that. I just saw his age. And one day after camp, one summer, he didn't go to camp. The lady who was praying for us about if we should be the leaders told me, hey, we're actually going to pick you and Ernesto. And I was like, okay. I had no reaction. I was like, okay, I don't know this person, but I should probably approach him so that we can meet and talk and really figure out what we're going to do with the youth. Mm -hmm. So it was my first time preaching at church. And right after the sermon, I go to the back. Homeboy sitting there, <laughs> like, chilling. And I go, and then I speak to him, and I'm like, hey, you know, so-and-so just told me that you're going to be youth leader, so am I. Um, let me get your number so that we meet up, talk about this, and really figure out what we're going to do. That was the first time I ever, like, <laughs> truly interacted with her. We basically exchanged phone numbers, and I, I kind of felt happy because it had been, like, four years or three years, and I never really talked to her, so... I was glad that we were going to be working together in a way. And that was the first time we, we really talked, right? Mm-hmm. And after that, what happened was we met up in church. So I had a lot of experience, like, working with people on campus at my school, like, in partnerships. So for me, logically, it's like, all right, let's meet up, talk about what we're going to do. Like, tell me the history of the church because I don't, I'm new mm -hmm. than you. Like, he grew up there. And we met up in church, whatever. We said hi. It was very awkward because, like I said, I had never spoken to this guy in my entire life. Also, he had a girlfriend at the time. So I was also very precautious. Like, I'm not the type to really hang out or, like, have guy friends. So from the beginning, we weren't trying to be friends. We were literally trying to work together. But when we did meet up, we got along very well together. Not in, like, a flirtatious way, but just, like, we got along. Yeah, we were good well, partners. Exactly. Yeah. That was the first time we truly had, like, a, a true conversation where we really were getting to know each other. But I was still precautious. You know, at, at that time, one a context that I want to add is that I did have a girlfriend at the time. But this the first time we ever met was literally one week before I, I broke up with my ex-girlfriend. So I never mentioned, she knew I had a girlfriend, but I yeah. never mentioned my girlfriend or any of that because I was going through, it was rough times. Yeah. I actually did notice that, that he never brought her up or anything, but I didn't think anything crazy. I just didn't think anything crazy. And then a week later, they ended up breaking up, but he, they were already, you know, yeah, that we, was already going to happen. Like it just happened that we met and then a week later, like they broke up. Yeah, we broke up a week later. We were having a lot of problems months and months prior even before i knew or even talked to Catherine. so that's basically what happened and basically after he broke up with his girlfriend like i said it was a very work thing like yes our conversations flowed very easily but it was never anything romantic until after he broke up with his girlfriend and that's when we would meet up over the phone to talk about the youth ministry but naturally, after, we would talk about the plans of like, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, whatever. And the meeting was over. We would still stay on the phone like, okay, how was your day, whatever. Like, naturally. And it was because even when he broke up with his girlfriend, he had told me what happened. And from there, I guess we kind of opened up. But one thing I wanted to say, too, was that after I broke up with my girlfriend and, and me and Catherine started to get to know each other more, I literally had no desire at all for a very, very long time to be in another relationship or to talk to anybody or to flirt with anybody. I just didn't care. I just wanted me and God and that's it. That's all I wanted. But, you know. I came around. <laughs> she, came, she came out of nowhere. I don't, yeah. I don't know what happened, but mm -hmm. yeah, things didn't go as planned. Yeah, and also another thing to know too is that even though I had never been in a relationship, I had no plans to date this guy ever or to even think that I would end up liking him because like I said when we first met up he had a girlfriend I had no even though like I said the first time I went to church I did think he was cute like once I found out his age and also that he had a girlfriend I just didn't even like consider him so after his relationship ended that's when our conversations after the meetings we would have for the youth would just get longer like naturally like naturally would end up saying like oh how was your day just sharing things about ourselves naturally and as we shared and shared I started realizing like oh my gosh like this is the person that I that I've always wanted or this is the type of guy I've always wanted to be with but I have never met in my entire life until I met him like every time he would share oh yeah I don't like when people do this in relationships or you know or that or like naturally we would talk about it because he had just went through a breakup so sharing stuff about that was pretty natural mm -hmm. it wasn't like 
he would talk about it or I would talk about it because we were interested. No, it was like, oh, I just went through a breakup. This happened. Yeah, I don't really like this or that. That happens in relationships. And I was like, oh my gosh, me too. And talk, talk, talk about everything until our conversations <laughs> would be like four, five hours long. And with time, like a month or two after, that's when we started realizing like, oh. Yeah. Exactly. And here's the thing. I knew there was a possibility, but I did not want to like her at all. And she did not want yeah. to like me. But the more we got to know each other, the more, like, literally everything I have wanted in a girl, everything she wanted in a guy, we noticed that right away. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of the same values because a lot of people say, oh, I'm Christian, and you may get to know other people. Yeah. If you're a girl and you're starting to, go to know a guy who's a Christian, or if you're a guy and you're starting to know a girl who's Christian... A lot of times you realize, wait a minute, they're not really Christian. But with her, when I started to get to know her, I was shocked. I was like, man, like me and her really do think the same. Me and her really do have the same values and, and fear of God. And that was a, a pretty big factor and one of the main reasons as to why we started liking each other. Yeah, so conversations got longer. We started realizing we had the same values, same everything, like he studies the same thing that I studied and mm -hmm. so many things that it was pretty obvious and inevitable for us to like each other. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously, it was inevitable for conversations not to be six hours long. And I had never spoken to somebody in my entire life for that long. He never had done that either. And it got to the point where I started feeling really sad, to be honest. <laughs> Because I didn't want to like anybody. I had just gotten a point into my relationship with God where I knew I was not ready for a relationship. I knew I needed to heal certain things. I knew that I needed to get closer to God without any distractions, like as a single person. And I just knew it was not time for a relationship. But I was scared because I'm like, yo, like these feelings are inevitable. Every time I've ever crushed on anybody else, it was always something that I kind of thought about. Like, oh, he's cute. I'm going to crush on him. With him, it was just like, whoa, like the feelings just came out of nowhere because it was like with time, I just realized, yo, he's perfect. He's exactly what I've ever wanted. So yeah, that's when I started praying to God about it. And I started asking God, like, God, please, I don't want to crush on anybody else. Like, I don't want to go through another heartbreak. Even though I never was in a relationship, I didn't want to like get, you know, ilusionada with somebody else again. But I could not resist the feelings. So I prayed about it and I asked God for confirmation. I was actually asking God for signs and there was multiple signs that God had answered, but I was still like unsure. Cause I was asking God like, if he's the one, he was moving at the time and he was texting me about it. Like, oh yeah, I'm moving so-and-so. And I was like, God, if he's the one, make him move closer to me. Like when he tells me the address, his address is gonna be closer to me. And he tells me, oh, yeah, we're moving to so-and-so. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's one train stop away from me. Like, he lives eight minutes away from me. And one of the signs was I was getting off the bus, and I was asking God, like, if he's the one, let him come into church at the same time that I'm about to come into church. Yep. Bro, I get off the bus, I turn, and I look straight at the sidewalk. Homie is walking. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing with a uh, like deli bag in his hand like he could just got a sandwich or something and I was like wait is that Ernesto? I was like wait is that Ernesto like what so like yo did God just answer me right now and then I just walked yes, to, the, to the church door and when we both met at the church door he like I was looking at him like really weird like like this and he was like Put his hand out and i just looked at his hand and he was like why are you being weird yeah like, why <laughs> he was like weird? he was like why are you being weird yeah. <laughs> and then i was like oh no nothing so i guess god had given me those not nah, god gave me those two signs but i was still unsure because i'm like no that has to be a coincidence like that could have just been a coincidence yeah. and then we had a visual at this visual they just said oh Catherine and Nesto, can you come to the front we're gonna pray for you both as the new new youth leaders and when we both went up when we both went up and they started praying for us, it was different people. It was like we were surrounded by a circle. They started praying uh, for us. They laid their hands on us. And as soon as they started praying, the Holy Spirit fell upon us and we just started crying and crying and crying. We, we were crying so much that we fell down to the floor. We were on our knees. I don't know what was going through her head, but as soon as that happened, I knew that there was something very special between us not not only in the sense of us being together in a relationship but like 
in the ministry that God put us in. Yeah, so we both literally fell and I was sobbing. And in that moment, it just felt like everything that happened in my life was preparing me for that position as a youth leader, not just in that church, but in general, like with this channel too. And I just felt like, yo, this is what God was, this is what God called me for. I was not thinking about him necessarily. Like I did notice, yo, we both fell at the same time, but I wasn't necessarily thinking like, oh, this is a sign or whatever. But after, um, when we when we fell, I was also speaking in tongues. And after this guy from our church who is, um, who has the gift of prophecy, but I had never really seen him do prophecies or anything like that. Personally, he came up to me and he, he also can interpret tongues apparently. So he, not appar- I say apparently because I didn't know until like he, he told me. And when he came up to me, he was like, oh, when you, when you were speaking in tongues, did you understand what you were saying? And I was like, no, I did not understand what I was saying. And he's like, oh, besides glorifying God, your tongues are glorifying God. God was also saying through your tongues that he's going to speak to you in a very big way tonight. You have, a, you have a gracia especial sobre ti. He said those two things. And when he said the, the gracia especial thing, like you have a special grace over you, a special something over you. I had been prophesied that before by another pastor who's actually my uncle and also has a gift of prophecy. Mm-hmm. So when he told me that, I was skeptical, not going to lie, like, okay, yeah, God's going to speak to me. Let's see. But when he told me that second part, I'm like, wait, hold up. But somebody else told me that and God did speak through them. So he's probably, you know, this is probably coming from God as well. I say probably because you always have to, you know, still test and see. Yeah. And, and, you know, I didn't know. I was like, okay, let's see. Whatever. But what's crazy was that as soon as he told me that, my eyes like went to him who was actually standing behind him on the altar, went to him. For some reason, I just looked at Ernesto like, wait, is God going to tell me something about us? Because that's really the only thing I want to know. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's all I want to know right now. And because I had been praying about it for a few months already. That was the biggest thing on my heart. Then what happened was there was a concert that we were going to go to that I was going to go to the next day. And we had two tickets left. The group that was going to go, we had two tickets left. And I had told him about it the day before. Like, hey, do you want to go to this concert? Bring your friend or this other guy from our church. And he couldn't go. He had to take care of his sister. And he, I just knew he wasn't going to go. But since God was going to speak to me greatly that night, when I was brushing my teeth, I was like, God, in my head, like, just like, I was like, God, if you're really going to speak to me, like, I did not think this was going to happen. I was like, I mean, I, I guess I, yeah, I did not think... I was like, okay, I, I don't know how God's going to speak to me. But I was brushing my teeth, and I was like, God, if you really are going to speak to me, may, like, reveal to me if he's the one by giving me these two signs. And I'm just chilling, like, brushing my teeth and thinking. And I was like, make him go to the concert, because I knew he wasn't going to go. And two, give him some type of dream with me, like, any dream with me. Brush my teeth, go about my business, go to sleep, think nothing of it. Next morning, wake up, go brush my teeth. It's the morning of the concert, and I get a ding from my phone. I look at my phone, and it's a WhatsApp message from homeboy, Ernesto, <laughs> saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't go to the concert, I have to take care of my sister. And as soon as I saw that message, I didn't open the message. You know how you can see the message in your notification, and you don't have to open it? I went about my business, kept brushing my teeth, and I was like, okay, God, he's not the one. I'm okay with it. Like I was fully like... Okay, he's not the one. I'm going to move on. Feelings over. That's it. We're going to keep Jeez, working together. Man. That's it. And I guess I was a little sad, but not really, because I was like, I asked God for this, right? So there we go. Kept brushing my teeth. Then I get another ding on my phone. And I'm like, yo, is this dude really going to continue <laughs> telling me he can't go to the concert? Like, I get it. I get it. And I go, and I see it's a voice note. I open the notification this time, and I see he deleted the previous message that I had already saw. And I was like, yo, why he deleted that message? Like, I get it. You can't go. You don't have to say it in a different way. I pressed the video, the, the audio message. And the audio message actually says, hey, yeah, sorry I deleted that message. But it's irrelevant now. Um, my dad actually said, like, last minute that I can go. He's letting me go to the concert. And I was like... <laughs> she was. She went nuts, but I had no idea to... Yeah. I had no idea. Like, yeah, he had no idea. He just said, like, yeah, I could go to the concert. He was excited about that. And I was like, I was like, yo, like, God really, I'm like, yo, like, he is the one. Like, that's it. He's the one. But I knew, obviously, I'm not going to tell him, hey, God revealed this to me. No, no, no. I was like, I know it's not the time right now, but Lord, thank you for the confirmation. 
Yeah, exactly. And one thing I wanted to add from my perspective is that there was literally no chance, no chance at all <laughs> that I was going to go to that concert because during that time, uh, my parents always had to work and I have a little sister and I always had to take care of her on Saturday. So I remember throughout that week before Saturday, they kept on talking about the concert and the concert and I really wanted to go, but I just couldn't. So I, if I remember correctly, I did pray to God as well. And I was like, God, I just wish I could go. And I remember waking up that morning. I remember the night before when the vigil was over, Catherine, she mentioned the concert again. I was like, no, I just can't go. I can't go. Um, but the next morning when I woke up, I actually asked my parents. I was like, yo, is there any chance at all that I can go to this concert? Because first of all, I hadn't really gone to any concert ever. Mm -hmm. It was a Christian concert where we could praise God. Um, and also, I wanted to see her. I was, you know, I, I really liked her. So I wanted to see her more often because the only place I would see her was at church. So I was like, yo, like, I want to see her outside of church too. Uh, so I called my parents in the morning and I was like, yo, is there any chance I could go to the concert? And they were like, oh, I'm, we're sorry. You have to take care of your sister. And I was like, dang, you know what? If it's God's will, it's God's will. <laughs> so, and then not even one minute passes by and then they call me right back and they're like, you know what? We're going to let you go to the concert. And I I, I went nuts. <laughs> I, I got so hyped. And then I, that's when I sent her the voice message. And yeah, that's basically what happened. But remember, that was one of the signs that got fulfilled. Uh, but there's another sign. Mm -hmm. The so, dream. Once God told me that. And this is the thing. God didn't audibly speak. It, and it wasn't like somebody told me, this is your husband. No, it was like I asked God. For confirmation, God gave me the confirmation, and I was willing to accept yes or no. But once he once he answered the first sign, and because, you know, they told me God was going to speak to me in a great way, and he did, I was like, that's his, my husband. I was super high. We went to concert. I did not give him energy. Like, I think we did have energy, like, oh, I like you. She definitely gave me some energy, man. Yeah, like <laughs> but we didn't say, like, we no, never, we never said, said it, but it was I obvious. like you, because I knew it wasn't time. Like, I just knew, like, I'm not ready for relationship right now. This is my person. I can God already confirmed that, but and I can tell because of how much we get along. But I think we still need to, you know, mm -hmm. let it happen naturally. Yeah, the whole ride there, there was a lot of chemistry, a lot of just like we just felt like, oh yeah, we do like each other. Definitely, yeah. And once we got home, um, the next day we had church. It was Sunday, so the vigil was Friday. The concert was Saturday. Sunday was church. We see each other as church. Super simple. Super regular. And at the end of the night after church, we're, we end up on the phone. So he responds to my story or something. And then I told him to, to call me or something because I was, I was like that. Yeah. <laughs> Where like if he would text me, I'd be like, oh, just call me. And then we would end up on the phone and we were talking for like six hours. Like it was amazing. We were just talking about just like regular everything, stuff. It wasn't everything. even like, it wasn't even like flirty. Like, yes, because we did like each other, it could of you know, like we could tell we liked each other. We weren't just trying to be each other's friend mm -hmm. but we never like flirted flirted really you just, just felt the chemistry yeah definitely it. so yeah as we're talking he's like you know what's crazy like after six hours mind you <laughs> you know what's crazy last night after the concert i had a dream with you and i was like wait hold up i completely forgot that i asked god for the second time <laughs> to give him a dream with me and i was like oh my gosh like this is the second sign like I asked God for that, and look, he did that. And I completely forgot about that sign. I completely forgot about it. And as he's telling me the dream, I'm like, wow. I was so confused. Wow. Oh, my God. And he's telling me a basic dream, like, oh, he was in California, and then he missed me, and he FaceTimed me, whatever. And the whole time, I was saying, wow. It was a very simple dream, but, like, the way she reacted, I was like, okay, she's, she's reacting like, I don't know, something's off, something... You know, she's not telling me something. And and I had an idea that maybe it was that, maybe it was a sign that she asked for, but I couldn't, I didn't know 100%. The, and the only reason I had an idea was because she told me, oh, I'm going to tell you in the future why I'm acting this way. And mm -hmm. that's it. That's, that's all she told me. But I knew something was definitely going on. Yeah. So that was what happened. And basically, after that long conversation... My mom noticed I was talking to homeboy for a very long time and we were not dating or anything. And that's when, um, even though I got those signs, even though those things, 
did happen and like I said I felt like it wasn't God's timing he also felt it wasn't God's timing because oftentimes he would mention about like oh you know I guess we were kind of new we liked each other even without saying it but we knew like it just wasn't time. it wasn't time yeah. we just knew that we both knew he he had to go heal from his relationship I had to get closer to God that's it and my mom is like hey I noticed you're talking to this guy who you're now you see the word for for really long hours I don't think that's good and the reason I don't think that's good is because you know you guys just started a ministry you guys just started to get to know each other you cannot be out here telling me that you guys now like each other like <laughs> this just doesn't look good it, it's a bad look um just in general and also it's not wise if you're not trying to be in a relationship with someone to talk to them for hours and, and hours, hours because yeah. eventually the feelings are going to be there and something's gonna happen like not to say you're gonna fall into temptation no but like it's just not healthy to be getting to know someone and being like oh no no we're never gonna date or we can't date right now yeah exactly. it's better to just you know keep it as friends and with time whatever so after she told me that i felt very convicted because i felt like it was true like if we keep talking for hours this has to go somewhere and it can't go anywhere because we both feel like we're not ready yeah we both knew that we weren't ready to date so yeah so what happened after that was that i asked god for forgiveness and i was like god i know you gave me this promise like i know you told me he's the one but i want to do things your way and at your time and i know that if he's the person for me no matter what we're going to end up together just help me have the patience to wait plot twist i didn't wait or i was forced to wait <laughs> we were forced to wait yeah and yeah we're gonna leave that for the next video we're gonna talk about the waiting process how it was like how awkward it was working together because remember we were still the youth leaders <laughs> yeah so it was a lot of awkwardness a lot of forgiveness too and mm -hmm. yeah it was a very long process of one year and five months that we weren't talking nothing flirty none of that so we're gonna talk about that in the next video. Definitely subscribe, like below, leave any questions, comments about what you've heard so far. And yeah, it was not easy. It wasn't like my mom told me stop talking to him and we easily stopped talking. It was a process to even stop talking. And a lot of tears, a lot of and pain. And suffering and pain and frustration and stress. Yeah, so yeah. in the next video we're gonna talk about that and then we're also gonna have a part after that where we talk about how we actually started dating so you won't want to miss this and we definitely hope that our story can inspire you to wait on god and to know that it is definitely a thousand percent worth it to obey him obey his word and even obey your parents like listen to your parents but <laughs> yeah bye guys that's it for bye. now bye, bye. bye. that took how many hours <laughs>